Welcome to our comprehensive book summary video on Contagious, Why Things Catch On by Jonah Berger. This book is a treasure trove of insights into why certain products and ideas become popular, and our video will help you unlock these insights in an engaging and accessible way. By watching this video, you'll gain a deep understanding of the six key principles that drive things to become contagious. Social currency, triggers, emotion, public, practical value, and stories. We delve into each principle chapter by chapter, providing detailed explanations that will help you grasp these concepts and apply them to your own ideas or products. But we don't stop at just explaining the principles. We bring them to life with engaging stories and real-life examples that illustrate these concepts in action. We also provide key takeaways from each chapter, giving you concise, actionable insights that you can refer back to at any time. Moreover, we offer real-life guidelines on how you can apply these principles in your own life. Whether you're a marketer looking to make your product go viral, a business owner trying to spread the word about your services, or just someone interested in understanding why certain things catch on, these guidelines will provide practical, hands-on advice that you can start using right away. So, if you're ready to dive into the fascinating world of why things catch on, join us on this journey. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay informed about our latest book summaries and insights. We're excited to have you with us, and we can't wait to explore this captivating book together. Why Things Catch On Introduction In the introductory chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, author Jonah Berger sets the stage for a deep dive into the fascinating world of viral content and ideas. He begins with an engaging anecdote about Howard Wine, a hospitality industry veteran who aimed to create the best steakhouse experience imaginable with his venture, Barclay Prime. However, Berger quickly points out that good food and a great atmosphere are not enough to guarantee success in the highly competitive restaurant industry. This leads to the central question of the book, why do some things become popular while others do not? Listen to stories, auto-achieve goals. Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. The Unlikely Success of Granny's Jam Once upon a time, in the small town of Berryville, lived a sweet old lady named Granny Smith. Granny Smith was known far and wide for her delicious homemade jam. She had a secret recipe passed down through generations, and her jam was a hit at every local fair and community gathering. One day, a young entrepreneur named Tom moved to Berryville. Tom was a city boy with big dreams. He had a successful online business selling unique food products from small towns across the country. When he tasted Granny Smith's jam at the local fair, he knew he had found something special. Tom approached Granny Smith with a proposal to sell her jam online. Granny was skeptical at first. She couldn't understand how her small-town jam could appeal to city folks. But Tom was persuasive. He explained how people were looking for unique, authentic products that stood out from the mass-produced items in supermarkets. Granny agreed to give it a try, and they started selling her jam online. But despite Tom's optimism, the sales were slow. The jam was getting lost among the thousands of other products on Tom's website. They were facing the same problem as Howard Wine in the introduction of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, a great product, but lost in a sea of competition. Tom realized they needed to make Granny's Jam stand out. He decided to leverage the power of storytelling. He created a short video about Granny Smith, her secret recipe, and the small town of Berryville. The video was heartwarming, authentic, and it made the jam unique. They posted the video online, and it was a hit. People loved the story behind Granny's Jam. Orders started pouring in. Granny's Jam was no longer just another product on the website. It was a unique item with a compelling story. The conflict was resolved, and Granny's Jam became a nationwide sensation. The story of Granny's Jam illustrates the themes discussed in the introduction of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. It shows the importance of uniqueness, the power of the messenger, and the potential for anything to become contagious. Just like the Barclay Prime Steakhouse, Granny's Jam stood out in a crowded market because of its unique story and the effective way that story was shared. Key Takeaways The importance of uniqueness, 
The story of Barclay Prime illustrates the importance of standing out in a crowded market. The restaurant's unique approach to delivering an exceptional dining experience helped it gain attention. The role of the messenger. Burger raises the question of whether the message or the messenger is more important in making something go viral. This suggests that the person or platform spreading an idea can significantly influence its popularity. The potential for anything to become contagious. The author suggests that with the right approach, any idea, product, or service can catch on and become popular. Suggested guidelines for implementation. Strive for uniqueness. Whether it's a personal project or a business venture, aim to offer something unique that sets you apart from the competition. Choose your messengers wisely. When spreading an idea or promoting a product, consider who is delivering the message. Influential individuals or platforms can significantly boost your reach. Believe in the potential of your idea. Don't underestimate the potential of your idea to become popular. With the right approach, anything can catch on. End of discussion. That concludes our discussion on the introduction of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. It's clear that the journey to understanding why things catch on is filled with intriguing insights and practical lessons. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. What stood out to you in this chapter? How can you apply these insights in your life? We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments below. Let's learn from each other and continue this fascinating discussion. Chapter 1. Social Currency Introduction In the first chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, Jonah Berger introduces the concept of Social Currency. This concept is based on the idea that people share things that make them look good or enhance their status among their peers. Berger uses various examples to illustrate this, such as a telephone booth being a door, ants lifting 50 times their own weight and the allure of frequent flyer miles being similar to a video game. The chapter explores how social currency influences what people talk about and share with others. Listen to stories, auto-achieve goals. Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. The Secret Society of Magic In the heart of Boston, there was a hidden gem known only to a select few the Secret Society of Magic. This was not a typical magic shop. It was an exclusive club for magic enthusiasts, where members could learn, practice, and share magic tricks. The club was run by a charismatic magician named Elias. Elias was a master of his craft, but he was also a savvy businessman. He understood the power of social currency. He made the club exclusive, only allowing a select few to join each year. This exclusivity made the club highly desirable and people vied for the chance to become members. One day, a young man named Sam discovered the club. Sam was an aspiring magician, and he was desperate to join. However, Elias told him that the club was at full capacity, and he would have to wait until next year. Disappointed but determined, Sam decided to find another way to join the club. Sam started practicing magic every day, honing his skills. He would perform on the streets of Boston, drawing crowds with his unique tricks. People started talking about the young street magician, and word eventually reached Elias. Impressed by Sam's dedication and talent, Elias decided to make an exception and invited Sam to join the club. Once inside, Sam was awestruck by the wealth of knowledge and experience the club offered. He learned new tricks, improved his performance skills, and even started creating his own magic tricks. The other members were impressed by Sam's passion and creativity, and he quickly became a respected member of the club. Sam's status in the club gave him a significant social currency. He was now part of an exclusive group, had unique knowledge and skills, and his identity as a magician was validated. He started sharing his experiences and knowledge from the club, further enhancing his status among his peers. The story of Sam and the Secret Society of Magic illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on social currency. It shows how uniqueness, exclusivity, and self-presentation can provide social currency, making people more interesting and enhancing their status among their peers. Just like Sam, anyone can increase their social currency by seeking out unique experiences, 
leveraging exclusivity, and being mindful of their self-presentation. Key Takeaways The power of uniqueness, unique experiences or knowledge can provide social currency because they make people stand out and seem more interesting to others. Status and Exclusivity Things that are exclusive or hard to get can provide social currency because they signal status and insider knowledge. The Role of Self-Presentation People share things that make them look good or reflect positively on their identity. Real Life Story The Rise of Clubhouse In the spring of 2020, a new social media app called Clubhouse began to make waves in the tech industry. Clubhouse was an audio-based social network where users could join rooms and engage in real-time conversations. Unlike other social media platforms, Clubhouse was audio-only, which made it unique. The founders of Clubhouse, Paul Davison and Rohan Seth, understood the power of social currency. They made the app invite-only, which meant that new users could only join if they were invited by an existing member. This exclusivity created a buzz around Clubhouse and people began to vie for invites. One of the early users of Clubhouse was Felicia Horowitz, a philanthropist and wife of venture capitalist Ben Horowitz. Felicia started hosting a weekly dinner party on Clubhouse where she would invite celebrities, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders to have candid conversations. These dinner parties quickly became one of the most popular events on Clubhouse, and Felicia's status within the app grew. Being a part of Felicia's dinner parties became a form of social currency. Attendees had the unique experience of engaging in conversations with high-profile individuals, something that was hard to come by outside of Clubhouse. Furthermore, being a part of these conversations allowed users to present themselves in a positive light, as knowledgeable and connected individuals. The story of Clubhouse and Felicia Horowitz's dinner parties illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on social currency. It shows how uniqueness, exclusivity, and self-presentation can provide social currency, making people more interesting and enhancing their status among their peers. Just like the users of Clubhouse, anyone can increase their social currency by seeking out unique experiences, leveraging exclusivity, and being mindful of their self-presentation. Suggested Guidelines for Implementation Seek out unique experiences and knowledge to increase your social currency. Seek out unique experiences or knowledge that others might find interesting or valuable. Leverage exclusivity. If you have access to exclusive information or experiences, sharing these can enhance your status among your peers. Be mindful of your self-presentation. Be mindful of how what you share reflects on you. Aim to share things that align with your identity and present you in a positive light. End of discussion. That concludes our discussion on the first chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. The concept of social currency provides a fascinating lens through which to understand why certain things catch on and become popular. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. Have you noticed the role of social currency in your own life? How can you apply these insights to enhance your own social currency? We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments below. Let's learn from each other and continue this fascinating discussion. Chapter 2 Triggers Introduction In the second chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, Jonah Berger introduces the concept of Triggers. This concept revolves around the idea that top of mind means tip of tongue. Berger uses various examples to illustrate this such as how a NASA mission boosted candy sales, how the location of voting could affect voting behavior, and how the context of a situation can influence what we talk about and share. The chapter explores how everyday environments can remind us of related products and ideas, thereby triggering word of mouth and making products and ideas more contagious. Listen to stories, auto-achieve goals. Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. The Unforgettable Rainy Day Umbrellas In the city of Seattle, known for its frequent rain, lived an entrepreneur named Emily. Emily owned a small boutique where she sold a variety of items, but her favorite were her uniquely designed umbrellas, known as Rainy Day Umbrellas. Despite their unique designs and high quality, Emily struggled to sell them. 
The boutique was located in a busy part of the city, and people often rushed by without noticing her store. Emily knew she needed to find a way to make her umbrellas top of mind for people, especially on rainy days. She realized that she needed to create a trigger that would remind people of her umbrellas whenever it rained. She came up with an innovative idea. She decided to partner with local coffee shops around the city. She provided them with small, beautifully designed umbrella-shaped tags. Every time a customer bought a hot drink on a rainy day, the barista would attach the umbrella tag to the cup. The tag had a small note. Stay dry with rainy day umbrellas. Visit our boutique at. This simple idea turned out to be a game changer. Now every time it rained, people were reminded of Emily's umbrellas when they bought their coffee. The context was perfect people were already thinking about the rain and how to stay dry, and the umbrella tag provided a solution. Sales of rainy day umbrellas skyrocketed. Emily's boutique became a popular spot, especially on rainy days. The conflict was resolved, and Emily's umbrellas became top of mind for people in Seattle whenever it rained. The story of Emily and her rainy day umbrellas illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on triggers. It shows how environmental triggers can make a product top of mind, how being top of mind can lead to word of mouth, and how the context of a situation can influence what people talk about and share. Just like Emily, anyone can leverage these insights to make their product or idea more contagious. Key Takeaways The power of environmental triggers. Everyday environments can remind us of related products and ideas, thereby triggering word of mouth. Top of mind, tip of tongue. Things that are top of mind are more likely to be on the tip of the tongue. We talk about what we think about. The importance of context. The context of a situation can influence what we talk about and share. Real life story. The success of Rebecca Black's Friday. In 2011, a young girl named Rebecca Black released a song called Friday. The song was heavily criticized for its simple lyrics and auto-tuned vocals, and it quickly became infamous, with many calling it the worst song ever. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, the song went viral and has since accumulated over 150 million views on YouTube. The success of Friday can be attributed in part to the concept of triggers. The song is about the joy and anticipation of the weekend, a feeling that is universal and relatable. Every week, as Friday approached, people were reminded of the song. The day of the week acted as a trigger, making the song top of mind and leading to word of mouth. Furthermore, the context in which the song was shared also played a role. People often shared the song as a joke or as a way to express their excitement for the weekend. This context made the song relevant and increased its shareability. Despite the initial negative reaction, Rebecca Black was able to leverage the power of triggers to make her song go viral. She turned the simple act of the week progressing towards the weekend into a trigger that reminded people of her song keeping it top of mind and encouraging people to share it. This real-life example illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on triggers and shows how anyone can use these principles to make their product or idea more contagious. Suggested Guidelines for Implementation Leverage Environmental Triggers Consider how you can link your product or idea to common environmental triggers to keep it top of mind. Keep your ideas top of mind. Regularly remind people about your product or idea to keep it top of mind and increase the likelihood of it being shared. Consider the context. Be mindful of the context in which your product or idea is being shared. Tailor your message to fit the context to make it more relevant and shareable. End of discussion. That concludes our discussion on the second chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. The concept of triggers provides a fascinating insight into how products and ideas become contagious. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. Have you noticed the role of triggers in your own life? How can you apply these insights to make your own ideas more contagious? We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments below. Let's learn from each other and continue this fascinating discussion. Chapter 3 Emotion Introduction In the third chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On 
Jonah Berger explores the concept of emotion. This concept is centered around the idea that when we care, we share. Berger uses various examples to illustrate this, such as how reading science articles is like standing at the edge of the Grand Canyon, why anger is like humor, and how breaking guitars can make you famous. The chapter delves into how emotional arousal, regardless of whether the emotion is positive or negative, can stimulate people to share and spread word of mouth. Listen to stories, auto-achieve goals. Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. The heartwarming tale of Buddy's Shelter In the small town of Maplewood, there was a local animal shelter run by a kind-hearted woman named Lisa. Lisa was passionate about her work, but the shelter, named Buddy's Shelter, after Lisa's first rescue dog, was struggling. Despite her best efforts, Lisa was finding it hard to get enough donations to keep the shelter running and find homes for all the animals. Lisa knew she needed to do something that would not only draw attention to the shelter but also tug at the heartstrings of the people in Maplewood. She decided to share the story of Buddy, the dog after whom the shelter was named. Buddy was a stray that Lisa had found injured and malnourished on the streets. Despite his condition, Buddy was a fighter. With Lisa's care, he slowly recovered and became a loving, loyal companion. Buddy's transformation was a testament to the power of love and care, and his story was filled with high arousal emotions from the sadness of his condition when Lisa found him to the joy of his recovery. Lisa shared Buddy's story on the shelter's website and social media pages. She included pictures of Buddy from when she first found him and after his recovery. The story was heart-wrenching and inspiring, and it resonated with people in Maplewood. The response was overwhelming. Buddy's story was shared hundreds of times, and donations started pouring in. People were moved by Buddy's story and wanted to help other animals at the shelter. Lisa was able to raise enough funds to keep the shelter running and find homes for all the animals. The story of Buddy's shelter illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on emotion. It shows how emotional arousal stimulates sharing, how high arousal emotions increase sharing, and how people share what they care about. Just like Lisa, anyone can leverage these insights to make their product or idea more contagious. Key Takeaways Emotional arousal stimulates sharing. Both positive and negative emotions can stimulate people to share as they create arousal. High arousal emotions increase sharing. High arousal emotions, such as excitement, anger, or anxiety, increase sharing more than low arousal emotions, such as contentment or sadness. We share what we care about. People are more likely to share stories or news that they care about or that resonate with them on an emotional level. Real Life Story The ALS Ice Bucket Challenge In the summer of 2014, a phenomenon swept across social media platforms worldwide the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. The challenge involved dumping a bucket of ice-cold water over one's head and then nominating others to do the same within 24 hours. If the challenge was not completed, the nominee was encouraged to donate to the ALS Association, an organization dedicated to fighting amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, a progressive neurodegenerative disease. The Ice Bucket Challenge was started by Pete Frades, a former Boston College baseball player who was diagnosed with ALS. The challenge quickly went viral, with celebrities, athletes, and everyday people participating and sharing their videos online. The success of the Ice Bucket Challenge can be attributed to the emotional arousal it created. The act of dumping ice-cold water on one's head evokes strong reactions, both from the participant and the viewers. These reactions were often of surprise and amusement, high arousal emotions that stimulated sharing. Moreover, the cause behind the challenge resonated with people on an emotional level. The stories of those affected by ALS, including Pete Frades, were shared alongside the challenge, creating a sense of empathy and urgency. This made people care about the cause and motivated them to participate in the challenge or donate to the ALS Association. The Ice Bucket Challenge raised over $115 million for the ALS Association in the United States alone, and it significantly increased awareness about the disease. This real-life example illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on emotion. 
It shows how emotional arousal can stimulate sharing, how high arousal emotions can increase sharing, and how people share what they care about. Suggested Guidelines for Implementation Evoke emotion. If you want people to share your idea or product, try to connect it to their emotions. Make them feel something. Aim for high arousal emotions. Try to evoke high arousal emotions, such as excitement or surprise, to stimulate people to share. Make it resonate. People share what they care about. Try to make your idea or product resonate with people on a personal or emotional level. End of discussion. That concludes our discussion on the third chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. The concept of emotion provides a fascinating insight into why certain things become contagious. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. Have you noticed the role of emotion in your own life? How can you apply these insights to make your own ideas more contagious? We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments below. Let's learn from each other and continue this fascinating discussion. Chapter 4 Public Introduction In the fourth chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, Jonah Berger discusses the concept of Public this concept is based on the idea that making behavior more observable makes it easier to imitate, which can drive the popularity of a product or idea. Berger uses various examples to illustrate this, such as how the Apple logo is better upside down, why dying people turn down kidney transplants, and how to advertise without an advertising budget. The chapter explores how making behavior more public can make it more contagious. Listen to stories, auto-achieve goals, Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. The Rise of Green Thumb Gardening In the city of Greenfield, there was a small gardening store named Green Thumb. The store was run by a passionate gardener named Sam. Despite his extensive knowledge and the high-quality products he offered, Sam struggled to attract customers. The store was tucked away on a side street, and many people in Greenfield didn't even know it existed. Sam knew he needed to make his store more public, to make the behavior of shopping at Green Thumb more observable. He came up with an innovative idea. He started a Garden of the Month contest. Every month, he would select a customer's garden to feature on a large billboard in the center of Greenfield and on the store's social media pages. The winner would also receive a gift card to Green Thumb. The Garden of the Month contest was a hit. People were excited to showcase their gardens, and the contest created a buzz around town. The billboard and social media posts made the behavior of shopping at Green Thumb highly observable. People could see the beautiful gardens created with products from Sam's store, and they were influenced to shop there too. Moreover, by making the private act of gardening public, Sam was able to influence others. People saw the beautiful gardens and were inspired to create their own. They turned to Green Thumb for their gardening needs. The story of Green Thumb illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on public. It shows how observability drives imitation, how public behavior influences others, and how making the private public can drive the popularity of a product or idea. Just like Sam, anyone can leverage these insights to make their product or idea more contagious. Key Takeaways Observability drives imitation. Making behavior more observable makes it easier to imitate, which can drive the popularity of a product or idea. Public behavior influences others. When people see others using a product or endorsing an idea, they are more likely to do the same. Making the private public. By making private behavior more public, we can influence others and drive the popularity of a product or idea. Real Life Story. The Success of Live Strong Bracelets. In 2004, the Livestrong Foundation, founded by cyclist Lance Armstrong, launched a campaign to raise awareness and funds for cancer research. The campaign involved selling yellow silicone wristbands with the word, Live Strong, embossed on them. The wristbands were sold for $1 each, and the proceeds went to the foundation's efforts to support people affected by cancer. The Live Strong wristbands became a global phenomenon. They were highly visible and easily identifiable, 
making the act of supporting the Livestrong Foundation and its cause public and observable. Celebrities, athletes, and everyday people around the world were seen wearing the wristbands, which influenced others to do the same. Moreover, the wristbands turned the private act of donating to a cause into a public behavior. By wearing the wristband, people were publicly showing their support for the cause, which influenced others to join in. The Live Strong Wristbands campaign was incredibly successful. It raised over $70 million for the foundation and significantly increased awareness about cancer. This real-life example illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on public. It shows how observability drives imitation, how public behavior influences others, and how making the private public can drive the popularity of a product or idea. Suggested Guidelines for Implementation Make it observable. If you want people to adopt your product or idea, make it more observable. The more people see it, the more likely they are to use it. Leverage public behavior. Use public behavior to your advantage. Show people using your product or endorsing your idea to influence others. Make the private public. Find ways to make private behavior more public to drive the popularity of your product or idea. End of discussion. That concludes our discussion on the fourth chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. The concept of making behavior public provides a fascinating insight into why certain things become contagious. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. Have you noticed the role of public behavior in your own life? How can you apply these insights to make your own ideas more contagious? We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments below. Let's learn from each other and continue this fascinating discussion. Chapter 5. Practical Value Introduction In the fifth chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, Jonah Berger discusses the concept of Practical Value this concept is based on the idea that people like to help others, so if we can show them how our products or ideas will save time, improve health, or save money, they'll spread the word. Berger uses various examples to illustrate this, such as how an 86-year-old made a viral video about corn, why hikers talk about vacuum cleaners, and why $100 is a magic number. The chapter explores how providing practical value can make a product or idea more contagious. Listen to stories, auto achieve goals. Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. The transformation of healthy habits. In the bustling city of Metropolis, there was a small health food store named Healthy Habits. The store was run by a nutritionist named Emily. Emily was passionate about promoting healthy eating, but she was struggling to attract customers. Despite the high quality products she offered, Many people in Metropolis didn't see the value in shopping at Healthy Habits. Emily knew she needed to show people the practical value of her products. She decided to start a blog and social media pages where she shared healthy recipes using products from her store. She also shared tips on how to save time preparing healthy meals, how to improve health through diet, and how to save money by choosing affordable, nutritious foods. The blog and social media pages were a hit. People found Emily's tips and recipes helpful and started visiting Healthy Habits to buy the products used in the recipes. They also started sharing Emily's posts with their friends and family, spreading the word about Healthy Habits. Moreover, Emily started offering cooking classes at the store where she demonstrated how to prepare the recipes she shared on her blog. This provided additional practical value and attracted more customers to the store. The story of healthy habits illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on practical value. It shows how helpfulness drives sharing, how practical value increases word of mouth, and how useful information gets shared. Just like Emily, anyone can leverage these insights to make their product or idea more contagious. Key takeaways Helpfulness drives sharing People like to help others, so if we can show them how our products or ideas will save time, improve health, or save money, they'll spread the word. Practical value increases word of mouth. Products or ideas that provide practical value are more likely to be talked about and shared. Useful information gets shared. Information that is useful or provides value is more likely to be passed along. 
Real Story, The Impact of IKEA's Flatpak Furniture IKEA, the Swedish furniture retailer, is a great example of a company that has leveraged the principle of practical value to become a global success. When IKEA first started, it was just a small business selling through a mail-order catalog. However, the company faced a significant challenge. Shipping large pieces of furniture was expensive and complicated, making the products less affordable for customers. Ingvar Kamprad, the founder of IKEA, came up with an innovative solution flat-pack furniture. By selling furniture in flat packs that customers could assemble at home, IKEA was able to reduce shipping costs significantly. This not only made the products more affordable but also added a unique aspect of practical value. Customers could transport the flat pack furniture easily, and the assembly process, guided by IKEA's detailed instruction manuals, gave customers a sense of accomplishment. This practical value was a key factor in IKEA's products becoming widely talked about and shared. People would share their experiences of choosing their furniture, transporting it easily, and the satisfaction of assembling it themselves. Moreover, IKEA didn't stop at just providing practical value through their products. They also offer planning tools on their website for customers to design their own spaces using IKEA furniture, providing additional practical value and making the information even more likely to be shared. The story of IKEA's flat-pack furniture illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on practical value. It shows how providing practical value can drive sharing and word of mouth, leading to the widespread popularity of a product or idea. Suggested Guidelines for Implementation Provide value. If you want people to share your product or idea, make sure it provides practical value. Show how it can save time, improve health, or save money. Highlight the value. Make the value of your product or idea clear and easy to understand. The more people understand the value, the more likely they are to share it. Make it useful. Provide information or features that are useful to your audience. Useful information gets shared. End of discussion. That concludes our discussion on the fifth chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. The concept of practical value provides a fascinating insight into why certain things become contagious. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. Have you noticed the role of practical value in your own life? How can you apply these insights to make your own ideas more contagious? We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments below. Let's learn from each other and continue this fascinating discussion. Chapter 6 Stories Introduction In the sixth chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, Jonah Berger discusses the concept of Stories This concept is based on the idea that narratives or stories are a powerful way to share information and ideas. Berger uses various examples to illustrate this, such as how stories are like Trojan horses, why good customer service is better than any ad, and how a streaker crashed the Olympics. The chapter explores how embedding products and ideas and engaging narratives can make them more contagious. Listen to stories, auto-achieve goals. Welcome to Babu Club, let's begin the journey. The Tale of Baker's Delight In the heart of the city of Bakersville, there was a small bakery named Baker's Delight. The bakery was run by a skilled baker named Olivia. Olivia was known for her delicious pastries and cakes but she was struggling to attract customers. Despite the high-quality treats she offered, many people in Bakersville didn't know about. Baker's Delight Olivia knew she needed to do something different. She decided to start a blog where she shared stories about her bakery. But these weren't just any stories. Each story was a narrative that revolved around a specific pastry or cake from her bakery. One story was about a young boy who found comfort in her apple pie after a tough day at school. Another was about a couple who celebrated their anniversary with her signature chocolate cake. Each story was engaging and memorable, making people more likely to share them. Moreover, Olivia's pastries and cakes were an integral part of each story. They weren't just products, they were characters that played a crucial role in each narrative. This made the stories more engaging and the pastries and cakes more memorable. The blog was a hit. 
People loved Olivia's stories and started visiting. Baker's delight to try the pastries and cakes featured in the stories. They also started sharing Olivia's stories with their friends and family, spreading the word about Baker's Delight. The story of Baker's Delight illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on stories. It shows how stories can act as vessels for information, how narratives drive sharing, and how embedding products and stories can make them more contagious. Just like Olivia, anyone can leverage these insights to make their product or idea more contagious. Key Takeaways Stories as Vessels Stories can act as vessels for information, carrying the key messages about a product or idea within an engaging narrative. Narratives drive sharing. People are more likely to share stories that are interesting, engaging, and memorable. Embedding Products and Stories By embedding a product or idea in a story, it becomes an integral part of the narrative, making it more likely to be shared. Real Life Story the impact of Airbnb's Belong Anywhere campaign. Airbnb, the online marketplace for lodging and tourism experiences, is a great example of a company that has effectively used stories to make their idea more contagious. In 2014, Airbnb launched a campaign called Belong Anywhere. The campaign was based on the idea that Airbnb offers more than just a place to stay. It offers a way to experience new places as if you truly belong there. As part of the campaign, Airbnb shared stories from real hosts and guests on their website and social media platforms. One story was about a host in Paris who taught her guests how to make traditional French pastries. Another was about a guest who was welcomed into a small village in Italy as if he were family. These stories were engaging and memorable, making people more likely to share them. They also embedded Airbnb's service in the narrative. The unique experiences described in the stories were only possible because of Airbnb. The Belong Anywhere campaign was incredibly successful. It not only increased bookings on Airbnb but also changed the way people think about travel. This real-life example illustrates the key takeaways from the chapter on stories. It shows how stories can act as vessels for information, how narratives drive sharing, and how embedding products and stories can make them more contagious. Suggested Guidelines for Implementation Tell engaging stories. If you want people to share your product or idea, embed it in an engaging story. The more interesting and memorable the story, the more likely it is to be shared. Make your product part of the story. Don't just tell a story about your product. Make your product an integral part of the story. This makes the story more engaging and the product more memorable. Use stories to convey information. Stories can be a powerful way to convey information about your product or idea. Use narratives to share key messages in an engaging and memorable way. End of discussion. That concludes our discussion on the sixth chapter of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. The concept of stories provides a fascinating insight into why certain things become contagious. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. Have you noticed the role of stories in your own life? How can you apply these insights to make your own ideas more contagious? We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments below. Let's learn from each other and continue this fascinating discussion.